Hello and welcome to UPSC Preparation Simplified, an initiative by Rao's I Study Circle where we try to solve the problems that you UPSC aspirants might face while preparing for the UPSC examination. It is our responsibility to actually make the entire process exciting, enjoyable and simple. And in this context, we are going to talk about the questions that were there in the UPSC mains examination, especially from the perspective of international relations. Today, we have the company of Mr. Rahul Puri, who is going to help us in terms of understanding that trend, what were the questions and why they were asked by the UPSC. So, sir, welcome on board. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nagin, sir. So, paper has been done. Uh, yes. There has been, the paper is out actually. Mm -hmm. And now we can actually see that the way we were preparing about the examination was yes. in line with the requirement of the UPSC. So, what is your first interp um, so what is your first impression about the paper? Uh, just after seeing the paper, I don't think the students uh, uh, who, who, who studied with us will going to face any problem uh, in attempting the questions because uh, questions were on very expected lines. Mm -hmm. So that's what I always tell the students that it's not just because I teach this subject, IR and internal security, <coughs> one of the most scoring part of your preparation. Why? Because the UPSC always asks very broad perspective from these topics. Once you understand the domain of the domain of the syllabus, that uh, it is easy that uh, what kind of questions will be there in the exam this year. First thing, question and whatever UPSC will ask, they will not going to dig too deep into these issues. So they will ask going to ask in a very macro perspective. That's why I always keep telling students: mm -hmm. once you are done with the basics, once you have a basic understanding of the world politics. Uh, try not to invest too much of time exploring IDSA, exploring ORF. All these are just uh, temptations to know more. It will not going to have any relevance from UPSC point of view. Of course. If you are, if you are consistent in your newspaper reading, <clears throat> if you are reading one newspaper daily consistently, you will able to do justice with all the questions in your mains from IR part. So if we see the paper and we see analyze the nature of the questions, we can see all these things were in the news in one form or the other in the recent times. Of course. So a student who is consistent with the newspaper that are watching our DNA <coughs> or if, a, if one of the source, any of the source following our focus can easily handle all these questions. So there was uh, there was nothing in the paper which I can say was uh, something uh, something which student can't answer or it would have been a shock for the student oh what has been asked by UPSC mm -hmm. at least in the module of IR what I can say. Now this is actually a very important aspect because students <coughs> keep on uh, discussing the one thing mm -hmm. that we should limit our resources but yes. the point uh, that you have highlighted that people go for IDS website yes. ORF as well mm -hmm. this is something which is not required as well unless until Actually's you have in GS. Huh, unless until you uh -huh. have political science IR as, as an, an optional, optional. Yes. but for uh, the general studies part yes. this is not required not required at all with so, conviction I can tell so this must this. be a great relief for all the aspirants who are preparing yes. now now if we look into the paper yes. the IR aspect there are two mm -hmm. questions of uh, 10 marks and two questions of 50 marks Marks, uh, 15 marks. Yes. Now, the paper looks like very China centric, isn't it? Yes, for sure. So, what is the reason? What is why, why UPSC has asked so many questions on one particular topic? Everywhere you can see the influence of China. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Everywhere you can't keep China out of the world politics at present. Mm -hmm. China is asserting, is trying to build a new world order that is China centric. <coughs> if you see the four main countries of Quad, mm -hmm. let's say it is if it is India, the biggest trading ally of India is China. Mm. If it is US, the biggest trading partner of US is China. If it is Australia, it is China. It is Japan, it is China. So you can't keep China out of the picture. Of course. So we can clearly see the influence of China in all the four questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Though asked in a very different manner. Different perspective, of uh, course. In a different manner. So if you see that, that question, that it's a very challenging question to write. It seems easy. Right mm. now, sitting here, I know the pressure to write when you are in the mains. I have been through the through I have been through this experience, so I know how tricky it could be to write at that particular point of time. Mm -hmm. It is very easy to analyze right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was a really tricky question that US is facing an existential threat in the form of China mm -hmm. that is more challenging than the erstwhile Soviet Union explained. Of course. L seems very easy. But you need to have a good grasp of uh, economics and the world politics to do justice to the answer for this question. Okay. We need to understand that Soviet was a socialist economy and there was it was bound to be stagnant. Mm -hmm. And China is not a socialist. Mm -hmm. China is a communist state, but uh, inclined towards capitalism. Yes, yes. So why China is posing a bigger threat? Because Chinese economy is about to surpass the US one. That's mm -hmm. why it is one of the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure how many of the students have touched this aspect. Mm -hmm. And if they have failed to touch this aspect, aspect uh, 
they will not going to have a good marks in this answer because this aspect needs to be touched okay now one <coughs> more thing i think we can add to this that uh, mm -hmm. when uh, russia and uh, US, uh, when ussr and actually mm -hmm. uh, us were competing against each other mm -hmm. they were also discussing things about political ideology yes. and china does not enter into that kind of yes. domain china is uh, too harsh on its own interest mm -hmm. so china is much more pragmatic than soviet okay okay okay, okay. and it's, uh, and in recent uh, recent years we have seen that us us hard power us credibility has also come under uh, under a lot of challenge from mm -hmm. various sides mm -hmm. so us is a receding power mm -hmm. and uh, china is the emerging one and mm -hmm. china, if chinese economy will surpass for sure china will able to build a new world order and that's the biggest threat in front of us wonderful so first is this then we can see you ups has asked objectives of sco mm -hmm. now why sco mm -hmm. i always used to tell students in my class now when since us withdrawal from afghan mm -hmm. taliban is in the news mm -hmm. Taliban in power in Afghan, one of the biggest challenge for the leaders of Central Asia and for India. Mm -hmm. So much Central Asia is in the news. Mm -hmm. In the uh, uh, NSA level meet of Central Asian, <coughs> the uh, this uh, the NSAs of Central we gave an invitation to the NSAs of Central Asia though Pakistan and China decided not to participate mm -hmm. in that. Then we gave invitation to the leaders of Central Asia to come and be a part of Republic Day parade though mm -hmm. due to COVID things got postponed. Mm -hmm. Just two days, three days before Modi has a virtual meet with the leaders of Central Asia. Mm -hmm. So Central Asia is so much in news. I was expecting one or the other question from the dynamics of Central Asia and UPSC has asked the question on SEO. Of course, of course. So it, it was it was very it was very uh, evident, I guess. It was ev evident. It was very uh, natural that question w will come from one from this particular region. Another okay. one, sir. Africa has been <coughs> in contention for such a long period of time. Yes. And there is a question on Africa as well. Mm -hmm. India's role in Africa. Africa. So here again, student should have touched the, the way China is engaged in Africa mm -hmm. and the way India is engaged in Africa. Mm -hmm. So those who have wrote, those by, those who have written in these aspects that. What kind of engagement China is having? Even though they have not asked exactly, hmm. but it is it is it is expected that we should touch the way China is engaged and the way India is engaged because as per the as uh, I was reading and I I have told this to the students also hmm. many African scholars their opinion is now within Africa there is a kind of hatred emerging against China mm -hmm. and India is able to acquire a lot of goodwill mm -hmm. because China is pursuing a very resource centric policy of course of giving course. scant regard to environmental and the labor standards mm -hmm. okay so China is acting as a new imperial power in Africa mm -hmm. and India's engagement in Africa is un totally different mm -hmm. the way China is engaged mm -hmm. So that aspect has been explored by UPSC in this question. So in India's <coughs> case, we can say that diaspora is also playing a positive role. For sure, diaspora, India, India have good because of the huge, huge number of diaspora we have. Then Gandhi is the emotional connect. Mm -hmm. Gandhi, all are aware of this. Gandhi started freedom struggle. Then after independence, Nehru pushed for Afro-Asian unity, NAM. Mm -hmm. All these aspects we need to cover in the answer for this question. Now, if we look into this entire aspect, you've already uh, very clearly stated that uh, it is easy to prepare. Hmm. But then what should be the right resources to prepare? Uh, again, I'll say there is no book for IR because if you see the questions, the nature of the question, there is no book where you can have the cooked answer for these questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there is no book for this. No book in the end. It is very difficult to write a book <laughs> for this particular subject. Of course. The nature of this particular mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why once so there is a need to go through some basic notes refer mm. some basic notes so mm. that you have a understanding of the basic dynamics of world politics mm -hmm. and after that the only source for this particular component from upsc point of view is newspaper reading of course so students should not go beyond their newspapers and they can entirely rely on good editorial and do they did and one more thing there's a there's a the here there is caution which i want to mention that there need to be a caution that do not comply with the views of one particular scholar mm -hmm. you need to be neutral a balanced perspective rather. Yeah, balanced perspective is what upsc is looking forward to you do not need to build your view there can be one scholar whose opinion is pro russia mm. pro us pro china mm. we need to have a balanced view that's why I read editorials and try to analyze the issue from various perspective and the last question which has been asked by UPSC is on AUKUS. It was in the news. Mm. Last time it was Quad. This time it is AUKUS. So very uh, question paper was on very predictable lines. Of course. So sir, you have actually explained a lot of things which are important from the perspective of the students and they must be getting hugely benefit from the entire discussion that we just had. I hope so. So now when you talk about this entire thing, I think sir has already solved many problems. The first problem, 
there should be limited resources and resources could be as limited as say newspaper only there is no need to go for even further like ids have said i know that many of you invest countless number of hours over there there is no need to go for anything else focus on very simple aspect and if you are connected with current affairs this will automatically happen one important tool that you already have is daily news simplified and focus magazine which gives you this kind of perspective and those who have been our students or they can subscribe our course as well qip can be one wonderful solution where you can actually solve this problem completely so from the entire team of rahul ayes we we thank you for your participation you have gone through this session i hope that this session must have given you a lot of clarity and you can see that the questions were easily doable you have to just ensure that you go for the balanced mind balanced perspective which sir has already highlighted and you will do very well in the examination from the entire team of rahul ayes we wish you all the very best stay tuned for more videos